what Pentecostals do not understand about this symbolism, the symbolism of speaking in tongues and why tongues have ceased, this is part 12 of the False Signs and Wonders series. We've been working our way through this series we're doing on false signs and wonders. It's they're a feature of the end time Great Tribulation, although we're not quite in that time period now. We're in the period of the apostasy. We already see signs and wonders today, and they come from the Pentecostals and the Charismatics. And the most famous sign and wonder is the speaking in tongues. Signs and wonders were limited to the apostolic age. They had an important reason. They validated the apostles who God used to write the New Testament. They ceased at the completion of the Bible, and the Pentecostals do not understand that. Also, signs and wonders were symbols of spiritual truth. Last video, we looked at the fact that tongues were actual languages used to spread the gospel in the first century. But there's another uh, meaning with tongues, and that's a symbolic meaning. We're going to look at that in this video. Please consider subscribing. There's a little red button in the bottom right-hand corner, and let's move on in this study. Pentecostal and Charismatics comprise at least 27% of Christianity today, probably more. Speaking in tongues today are, are typically people, they make sounds that are in a language, and they call it an unknown tongue, an unknown language. It's not known to the speaker, and it's, it's often like gibberish. And they do that because they don't want to have to justify the interpretation of that tongue. It's, it, it's an excited religious psychological state. They believe it's a quote-unquote certifying consequence of baptism in the Holy Spirit. And again, we've looked at the studies before that the baptism in the Holy Spirit is really salvation and sanctification. Signs followed that in the first century, but they ceased. Uh, baptism, they believe, comes after salvation, which is just a false gospel and not true. Studies today show that People that analyze language, they've looked at people speaking in tongues, and they say it's just a facade of a language. In other words, it's, it's a fake language, it's gibberish, there's no actual language there. It's, it's just normal patterns in the speaker's own language that come out. So we want to move on and understand more about speaking in tongues because it is such a significant thing that goes on today. We looked in the last video at several of these passages. There's not very many passages actually in the Bible about speaking in tongues. But we we worked on some of these. We're going to continue that in this video. But we see that tongues were an important uh, thing to be done in the first century because they helped spread the gospel. They were known languages. It was a sign. It was a wonder. But it was also a practical in that it got the gospel out. But then in the churches, it started being overused. It started to be, even if there was no interpretation, they wanted to use it. And that's exactly what Pentecostals are doing today. So let's move on in the study and look more at tongues and especially the symbolism of speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues today is not genuine. They're not real spiritual language. Signs and wonders, which include speaking in tongues, were an apostolic gift during the early church in the first century until the completion of of the Word of God. An apostolic, an apostle is a sent one. And the apostles in the book of Acts are actually those who saw and heard firsthand witness of Jesus Christ. The signs and wonders validated the apostolic authority and the apostolic church. Signs and wonders were also symbols of spiritual truth involved in the gospel. So, signs and wonders ceased after the word of God was completed by apostles and the word of God spread among Gentiles in the world, which we're going to look at on the next slide. I, I'm going to tag on this slide uh, a previous video we did on the cessation of signs and wonders. It's important. Please review that video. So let's move on in this study. Just a quick review from our last video, which I'll tag on this slide. Tongues were used to spread the gospel because they were known languages. People were miraculously given the ability to speak in somebody else's language so people could hear the gospel. And we saw how well that was used. Book of Acts, 3,000 saved, 5,000 saved, a little bit after that. And we see on the day of Pentecost, they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues. And those other tongues, very clearly, the Acts 2, verses 9 to 11, actually list 
list the regions of where these people were from and that they were other bona fide languages and God's very careful to tell us that they were actual languages and it was to get the gospel out. Tongues were besides an actual language which provided a useful purpose, so, tongues are actually a sign. Romans 15, 19, through mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God. Again, the power of the Spirit of God came on the, the day of Pentecost. They were baptized in the Spirit with these mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit. So that from Jerusalem and round about unto Illyricum, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. This was the extent of Paul's gospel, Paul's message using the gospel. And signs and wonders followed. And we see tongues are called a sign in 1 Corinthians 14, 22. Wherefore tongues are for a sign. A sign is a symbol. It's something that represents something else. It's like a signpost when you're driving. A curve in the road, you see the curve sign. That means there's a real curve coming up after that. And they were a sign not for them that believed, but for those who believed not, because it was about getting the gospel out. Mark 16, 17. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils, and they shall speak with new tongues. Because the gospel needed to go out. And it's a beautiful thing. But we see something beautiful in the Bible. That the tongues are new tongues. They're a new song. It's something that they didn't do before. We see a, a beautiful illustration. They said the 24 elders in the book of Revelation, which are a symbol of God's people. They're a symbol of God's people. And they sung a new song. Christianity has to do with putting a new tongue in our mouth. It has to do with a new song, a new way of thinking, new words that come out of our mouth saying and this is the type of things that come out of a christian's mouth you are worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof god is the one that interprets scripture for us for you were slain and have redeemed us to god by your blood out of every kindred tongue people and nation it's praising god praising jesus christ psalm 40 he has put a new song in my mouth even praise unto our god we speak in new tongues because before we were we had maybe had a mouthful of bad things, but now we're speaking good things. We're praising God. We're sharing the gospel. It's a new tongue. Historically, it in the first century it was an actual language, but now we also speak in a new tongue. It's symbolic of speaking the new language of God's word. Many shall see it in fear and shall trust in the Lord. It's the way the gospel goes out. Psalm ninety-eight. Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. For he has done marvelous things. His right hand, his holy arm, has gotten him the victory. That's all about salvation. And, and when, we're, when we're born again, when we're baptized in the Spirit, we're filled with the Spirit. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Everything that comes out of our mouth should be Christian-like. It should be praising God, glorifying our Lord Jesus Christ. The wisdom of the Word of God, the, the, the intricacies of, of knowing right, the right thing to do. Instead of plodding through this life, we have wisdom. Ephesians 5, be filled with the Spirit. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. That's what it is to talk about the Bible. It, it's a spiritual song. It's a beautiful melody of telling people about the Word of God, telling the people about the, about the Lord Jesus Christ. And we sing and make melody in our heart to the Lord. Acts 2, 4, we see that same language. The same language we see in Ephesians 5 is in Acts 2, 4. In the day of Pentecost, they were filled with the Spirit and began to speak, speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. In Ephesians 5, it says, speak. Filled with the Spirit, speak to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. It's a beautiful thing that our the symbolism of speaking in tongues is that now Christians are able to proclaim the Word of God. Okay, tongues in the church, though, the, the, in the first century, were not a, pro, a priority. And that unknown tongue, they were speaking another language that they couldn't interpret. It became a problem because... The true, the true song, the true tongue of the word of God could not be heard. 1 Corinthians 14. I'd rather speak five words with my understanding that by my voice I might teach also 
than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue, a tongue without interpretation. And right after that, very interestingly, we see in the next couple of verses a quotation from the Old Testament, which we're going to spend time to look at. In the law it is written with men of other tongues and other li lips will I speak unto this people, and yet for all that they will not hear me, saith the Lord. Speaking in other tongues is a new spiritual language we have. It's glorifying the Word of God, and people can't understand it. But the Corinthians, their overuse of speaking in tongues without interpretation was causing them not to hear the Word of God. They will not hear me. They will not hear me because they're speaking. The Pentecostals today are more interested in speaking in tongues than actually learning what the Bible has to say. They're looking for signs and wonders. But it's important that we don't let speaking in tongues, which is not a valid sign, and many Christians, unfortunately, are wrapped up into this movement, and they allow that to obscure and, and keep them from the truth of the Word of God. Okay, and as we move back, 1 Corinthians 14, speaking about tongues, there's a quotation in Isaiah 28, verse 11 and 12. And let's look at this Isaiah 28, which is a beautiful passage. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. Another tongue will he speak to this people. And that's tongues. It's the speaking in tongues to whom he said, because this is tied to 1 Corinthians 14. And to whom he said, the speaking in tongues refers to this is the rest wherewith you may cause the weary to rest. This is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. That's what's quoted. The pieces of this are quoted right back in 1 Corinthians 14. Tongues here points to share in the gospel because it's called the rest, which we you may call the weary to rest. And we see rest all through the Bible is a symbol for salvation. The Sabbath day, a day of rest, a symbol for salvation. Matthew 11, come unto me, all you that are labor and heavy laden. You weary people, come to me. I will give you rest. We only find true rest in Jesus Christ. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. You shall find rest unto your souls. Speak in another tongues. The purpose of it, the symbol of it, was salvation. It was the gospel. It was the word of God. And when people use speaking in tongues and don't have an interpretation or they use it like they do today, it's just a gibberish. It's just to show them, try to show people how spiritual they are. It's really showing their damnation. It's showing that they're not really Christian because they're not proclaiming the gospel. First Corinthians 14, again, tongues were for a sign. Not to them to believe, but to them that believe not. It was meant, the tongues, purpose of the tongues, the symbol of the tongues is to go share the gospel, to share the gospel to people that are weary and need to find rest for their souls. Okay, we want to look a little bit deeper into Isaiah 28. <clears throat> the context of this passage, Isaiah 28, verse 1 to 13, is about judgment on Israel. It's a, and Israel was the church in the wilderness. They were the church of the Old Testament, and they're being judged. But there's a promise of salvation in the passage. But even the priest, the prophet, have erred and become spiritually drunken. The leaders of the church were spiritually drunken. That's the context of what we find this passage in Isaiah 28, which is quoted in 1 Corinthians 14. Isaiah 28, verse 9 to 13, is going to talk about the knowledge and doctrine of God is veiled. It's veiled to those who do not understand. And these another tongue, these stammering lips are used to veil the gospel. And this actually applies to the Pentecostals and Charismatics today. And let's now move into the next slide and see why that's the case. So when we take a closer look at these verses, verse 9 to 13, we see in verses 9 and 10, it, it, it's going to tell us what is the method to actually understand God's Word. How do we really understand? Because God's Word, there's so much of it. And it goes back and forth here and there. So the way to learn God's Word, first you have to be saved. You have to have the Holy Spirit. So let's pick this up in verse 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge? Who can really understand the Word of God? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. 
there, there's a weaning that you have to get into deeper study of the Bible. And how do you do that? For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little bit, there a little bit. We scour the Bible. We go look for truth. We bring it all together. We analyze it. It's like a, 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 it's, 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 when we're filled with the Spirit, we're full of the Bible. We don't isolate passages out of context. So with that, in verses 9 to 10, say, here's how you can learn the Bible. And then verses 11 and 12, which we looked at, is about the unknown tongue. Yet they would not hear. They came even in unknown tongues to try to make it in their own language. But, but it becomes an unknown tongue. When, when the tongues without interpretation were done in that Corinthians church, it's, they, they couldn't hear. They can't hear. They were speaking in tongues, but it had no value because there was no interpretation. They would not hear. They, instead of spending their time on the Word of God, they spent it on signs and wonders. Those who would not hear, uh, Isaiah 28, in the following uh, verses, but the Word was unto them as precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little bit, there a little bit, just repeating what was back in verse 9 and 10. But here in the context, because they're speaking in tongues, they didn't take the time. They were obsessed with signs and wonders. So they, 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 went, they might go and fall backward and be broken, snared, and taken. The very thing that can give them knowledge about comparing Scripture with Scripture and taking the time of the Bible became a snare because they were more interested in the signs, in the speaking with tongues, in the unknown, the other tongues, without an interpretation. That's the context of 1 Corinthians 14. And that's why Pentecostal and Charismatics follow tongues, because it's, it's, a, it's a curse to them. It's a damnation on them that they're wasting their time. They're focused on, on the flesh, on earthly signs and wonders, instead of the Word of God. And that's what 1 Corinthians 14 is saying. I'd rather spend f five words preaching a prophecy than 10,000 words in a tongue. Jesus came speaking parables. We saw in Isaiah 28, 9 and 10 of this thing about precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little bit, there a little bit. And this, isn't that exactly what Jesus did? When he came and spoke parables, without a parable he spoke not unto them. The di disciples came and said, why speak you in parables? And he answered and said, to them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it is not given. For whoever has to him it shall be given, who shall have more abundance. And whoever has not, which is pointing to unsaved people, from him shall be taken away even in his has. And that's exactly what speaking in tongues is. Instead of spending the time in the Bible comparing Scripture and Scripture and coming to truth, instead they, they isolate, they take signs and wonders out of the context of the Bible, and they spend all their time on that. And they're not being, even though they claim that they're teaching people the Word of God, they're really not. The Holy Spirit is the one that teaches God's Word. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. We, Christians, we would rather speak five words in something that people can understand than 10,000 words in a tongue that they can't. We speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. God has revealed it to us by His Spirit. That's what the baptism of the Spirit is all about. It's not speaking in some tongue and, and trying to be spiritual. No, the Holy Spirit is our teacher, our comforter, our guide. The Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. Precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little bit there, but we spend, we're obsessed with the Bible. We have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know, that we might know the things that are freely given us of God, which things also we speak, we share the gospel. Not in the word man's wisdom teaches, but that which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual with spiritual, line upon line, precept upon precept, a little bit here, a little bit there. And Jesus' apostles were unlearned and ignorant men. You don't need a college degree to, to, to compare Scripture and the Bible. You just need to take the time to do it. If you have the Holy Spirit, you can compare Scripture with Scripture. And the things that are spiritual are the words of God. It is the spirit that quickens, the flesh profits nothing. Jesus said, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit. We want to compare Jesus, and Jesus is the word of God. We want to compare his words with other words all through the Bible to come to truth.
God's people do understand Jesus Christ. The natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, they're their foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. And, and Jesus says, my sheep, though, hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. And Jesus said to the unsaved religious leaders, why don't you understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. And the people in Corinth were more obsessed with, to with tongues. And people today in the Pentecostal movement, they're more obsessed with speaking in tongues than they are listening to the word of God. Finally, it's worth noting that other tongues... Tongues that are not understood, like the present day speaking in tongues, actually it's a symbol, it's a symbol of judgment. It's a symbol of judgment on the nominal church. We see that in the book of Jeremiah where, where Israel was in rebellion to God, worshiping other gods and idols. And Jeremiah prophesies and say, Lo, I will bring a nation upon you from far, a mighty nation, a nation whose language you know not. And that's what speaking in tongues today is. It's a language that people know not, neither understand what they say. They shall eat up thine harvest, thy bread, which thy sons and thy daughters should eat. They shall eat up your flocks. And isn't that what the Pentecostal church is doing today? Instead of proclaiming accurately and truthfully this word of God and what it teaches about salvation and prophecy, instead they're all obsessed with speaking in tongues. They're bringing, they're wasting time. Pe Pentecostal the churches and people that follow charismatic uh, beliefs have unknown languages. It's actually a plague on the true church. The similar message is also in Deuteronomy 28. You can look at that on your own. But it, it, speaking in tongues is actually a judgment on the nominal church that's not saved. Okay, just a quick summary about the symbolic meaning of tongues. In the last video, we saw that tongues in the first century AD were known languages. It was used to for, send forth the gospel. It's all about the gospel. But Pentecostals and Charismatics today believe that tongues, they're gibberish. They, they can't really be interpreted. But they're an important evidence of this higher filling. The baptism of the Spirit makes them a better Christian. We're more spiritual than other Christians. But we see tongues are actually symbolic of two things. First, it's the new song of salvation. It's the new way that Christians speak. The things they used to talk about are replaced by the Word of God and talking about Jesus Christ, their Lord Jesus Christ, the beautiful new melody of salvation. But secondly, tongues are also symbolic of judgment on those who cannot understand the Word of God. We saw that in Isaiah 28 and 1 Corinthians 14 and Jeremiah 5. The Corinthians overused tongues and it caused them to not to hear the truth. They were more interested in that. Paul said, I'd rather speak five words in a known language than 10,000 in, in some other tongue. It was a judgment that they couldn't hear the truth. Today, tongues are a judgment on the church. It's not helping them. It's distracting them. It's taking them away. It's putting their mind on the flesh, on the sign, rather than the truth of the word of God, which is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. Next video, we need to look at what in the world are those cloven tongues that were sitting on the 120 disciples' heads on the day of Pentecost. We're going to look at that in the next video. Please consider subscribing to this channel, and thank you very much for watching this video.